Uh, this morning, I want to take um, a little bit of your time just to speak on a few things that I think should be addressed and uh, that everybody should be aware of and know how to approach it. Uh, this morning, I just want to talk on the subject of, you know, uh, maintenance, how to maintain the things that God has for you in your life. Many of us in here, in this place, we work so hard uh, for a certain thing in our lives, yet once we receive it, we do so little to maintain it. Have you guys many uh, seen uh, people when, they, uh, when they're sick, they run to church and they begin to cry to God, God heal me, God heal me, I'll do anything that you want me to do. Yet once they're healed, you see them nowhere to be found in church. Or when you see some people, you know, when they're broke, they have no money, they begin, they, they cry out to God, you know, bless me with the job, I'll, I'll do everything, you know, just at their desperate state. Once God begins to give them a job, you never, ever again to see them in church and their excuses, I'm too busy, I have nothing else going on for me, you know, just, I need to spend time with family, this or that, which is important. But after God has blessed them, they walk away from God the giver of that blessing and sooner or later you hear back from them and they, they no longer in the same position of blessing as when they received it. So this morning I just want to talk a little bit and take of your time to talk about the principles, the principle of maintenance. How do we maintain the thing that God has for our life? We work so hard many times to fight for the good things. We work so hard for, we, we pray, we battle, but yet when we receive it, we do not know how to hold on to it, how to make it last for a lifetime. Because this is the will of God, that once God saves you, that once God heals you, once God blesses you, it is a blessing forever. God does not want to give you a temporary blessing. God does not want to give you a temporary joy that's not of Jesus. Jesus, God is a God who is faithful. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. He speaks of consistency. He does not speak of something that is just short, that lasts just for a little bit. He speaks and he talks about that when I want to give you something that it lasts a lifetime. We've seen many people, you know, today who were previous car owners are walking on their feet. They're, they're no longer, they, they drive a car. They take a public transportation. We've seen many people who had great businesses in the past, today are working uh, just a minimum paying jobs. We've seen many people today who had beautiful marriages, today are divorced and they're single. We cannot say that God did not bless him and did not give him a, a beautiful thing, a nice thing. But yet because people do not know how to maintain a blessing, they begin to lose that good thing that God has for their lives. We've seen it many happen to many people before. God is a good God. God is good and he blesses us. He gives us the things that we ask for. But yet if we don't do our part to maintain that miracle, that blessing, it soon begin to leave our lives. I want to, there's this, uh, I was recently reading on Yahoo News, there's this NBA player, uh, David Harrison, if you put up his picture, he was played for Indiana Pacers. Um, he once was a, in 2007, 2008, no, uh, I think back in the day, he was a first round pick for an NBA and he was destined for just greatness. But um, according to Spears of Yahoo Sports, the former U University of Colo uh, Colorado standout was working at McDonald's restaurant to make ends meet as recently as two years ago. Harrison made 4.4 million before taxes during his four seasons with Indiana Pacers and also played in China professionally for three seasons. He said, he said almost all the money is gone. Now I'm 32 without a college degree. Harrison said he is having a hard time finding a job and it is working at McDonald's currently as we speak. Somebody who had, I was at the peak of his career, somebody that was making millions of dollars today is working at a McDonald's. Somebody where a 16 year old just getting out of high school supposed to be working just to to be able to to get up. As somebody who had the great blessing in his life today is working at the lowest point of his life. What is the cause of this downfall? What is the cause of people receiving the good things and yet not knowing how to maintain it? You know, many people who even, you know, when, 
I've seen it many times in church. It happens, you know, when single guys, you know, and they come to church and they meet a girl, you know, they're like, God, I'll stop talking to all them hundred girls. I'll just give me that one. <laughs> and it doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, and it's one of those things that they, they, they ask for great things from God, yet they do so little effort and they put in so little effort to maintain the miracle that God has for their lives. So this morning, I want to just read a scripture and just uh, point out a few things. Um, that we can learn from the stories from the Bible and take few principles to learn how can we maintain the blessing that God has for us. You know, even as a church, we have great things that God has in store for us. How do we maintain the miracle that God has in store for us? We are praying for multitudes. We're praying for hundreds. We're praying for heal healings to happen. We're praying for deliverance. How do we contain the miracle that God has in future for us? Because God says that I am faithful. Whatever you ask, you shall receive. But when you receive it, how do we maintain it? So let's open to the book of Mark 10, if you have your Bibles, verses 49 through 52. And it says, so Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him. Rabboni, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. I want you to underline that last thing that said. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. What does this statement mean to you? What does it mean that blind Bartimaeus, what did he do by follow Jesus along the road after he received his healing? Is it that the blind man just wanted to be seen by others? Is it that the blind man wanted to show everybody that look, you know, I'm following Jesus. I'm sitting in the front row. I'm praising Jesus. You know, I'm a, I'm a good Christian guy. What was blind Bartimaeus trying to prove to us? What secret did blind Bartimaeus knew that we can learn from him today? Blind Bartimaeus understand that to receive a blessing is not as hard as to maintain it. He understood that part. He knew that look, anybody can receive a good thing, but not everybody can maintain it. Not everybody can maintain it. Anybody can go get a Mercedes Benz off a dealer from, from, from the parking lot, but not everybody can afford the payments. Everybody can receive good health and many of us do have good health. But not everybody can maintain good health. Maintaining good health requires going to gym, uh, eating right. Anybody can receive a good and happy relationship but not everybody can maintain that. We've seen it happening many times where God is faithful. He gives us the things that we ask for. But yet on our part, we have to do what is required to maintain it. We find ourselves many times in the same position as blind Bartimaeus. We cry out desperately. We cry, Jesus, have mercy on us. Son of, Son of David, have mercy on us. Give us the thing that we're asking for. We see that happening in our church many times. People come and at the desperate stage, they're like, they're either bound in drugs. They're either having curable disease and they just promise God heaven and earth. But yet once they receive it. They see they, they, they're, they're not committed to church. They're not serious. They, they don't want to do nothing with church. For them to come to church is a mission. It's like, hey, why aren't you at church uh, this Wednesday? Man, everybody's pressuring me. I feel so much pressure. Two hours is a lot. You know, I'm tired. I need to clean my house. Pillows on the floor. I just need to clean it. it. Takes me three hours to clean a pillow that's just on the floor. It is just so much pressure. Everybody wants me to become a leader. I don't know. I just I can't handle this good life. I want to go back. And you know, sooner or later, you see them going from the front pew to the second pew to the back to the baby uh, to the baby's room, and then after that, they're gone. And it's the truth. I'm saying the truth, right? That's, that's how it happens because they feel like once at the desperate stage, they promise God heaven and earth. Once receiving it, they forget all about what they promised to God. They have this good thing in their hands. They're holding it. 
and they forget that they're, they, were, they were asking God for the good thing and they begin to concentrate on the good thing instead of the giver of that blessing that you asked for. And one thing that we can realize from the blind by Timaeus is the secret that he can tell us is that whatever that we have now came from God and whatever that we'll have in the future will also come from him. Anything and everything that you have right now in your possession, it is not yours. It came from God. And everything in the future that you will still receive is also coming from Jesus Christ. One thing that we can know, now another first point that we can write down is that we need to look beyond the blessing to the blessing provider. We need to look beyond the blessing. We're asking God many times for, you know, for a home group. I don't know what you're asking God for. You, every single person has a thing that we're asking God for. Maybe asking for the good health. Maybe you're asking for a good marriage. Maybe you're asking for a promotion. But you have to look beyond that to the blessing provider, the giver of that blessing. We have to understand because we know in life it's not certain. We do not know tomorrow but God does. We know one thing about this life that it is uncertain. We know that many times we have things and many times we don't have things. When we begin to concentrate on the blessings, we begin to clinch to them, hold on to them, we begin to waver, we begin to go up and we begin to go down. And blind by Timaeus, the blind man, wants to teach us a lesson this morning that look beyond that. The statement that we underlined this morning that he said that after his healing, he followed Jesus along the road. He did not follow Jesus so people can see, oh, he's a good church boy. Blind Bartimaeus understood that I can chase the blessing or I can chase the blessing provider. He understood that, look, what I'm going to get right now is that blessing, that sight. I'm going to get it right now. He's going to give it to me. It's not mine. But in the future, I'll still need Jesus because there's more things to come. And he's the one that's going to give it to me. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus Christ. In the, in, in the Bible, we see many heroes of faith that teach us the same lesson. A great example is the life of Job. He's, his life modeled concentrating on Jesus Christ, who is the blessing provider. At a time where he said he was the richest man on the whole earth. He was the most righteous. Yet he looked beyond his possessions, beyond his health, beyond what he had. Because at a moment when tomorrow was not promised, he got down on his knees. And when he lost everything, he said, God, blessed be your name. When his wife would challenge him and said, curse God and die, you're losing everything. He said, you speak as a foolish one because God was the same God who blessed us when we had nothing. And God is going to be the same God who's going to bless us and we're going to have everything. Blessed be his name. Look beyond the blessing. Look beyond what you're looking for this morning. Is it maybe that deliverance that you're looking for? Begin to seek God instead of the blessing. Begin to seek God instead of the healing. Begin to seek God instead of the deliverance that you're looking for this morning. Amen church? And looking at the life of David and one thing when I was reading, uh, when, Saul began, when Saul begins to chase David, begin wants to kill his life and begins to just destroy and just jealousy and, and at a time where, where David's men, you know, said, you know, you could I, David could kill Saul just wipe him out of this this earth and and David begins to say said I will never raise my hand against the anointed one basically what he was trying to say is look that God is in control and I'm not going to go take the matters into my own hands God knows what he's doing I'm going to trust God even though I can solve this problem right now by myself but God is in control I'm trusting God I know I need protection I know I need to be saved I know my kingdom was taken away from me but I'm going to trust that God is in control I'm looking beyond my protection I'm looking for to the one who gives that protection which is Jesus Christ amen church We need to understand that today is ours, but tomorrow belongs to God. Today is ours. What we do today, it belongs to us, but tomorrow is not promised because God holds tomorrow in his hands. 
we have to understand that since man was created by God's touch, he will always and continually will need God's touch in order for him to exist. We can never walk away from our creator. We can never walk away from him because we always will need that. We were created by his touch. We'll always long that. We'll crave that. And the blessings that we receive, they cannot replace it. Men will always will have that craving for God's touch and many times blessings they get in the way and we begin to crave that we're gonna begin to want it but once we lose the blessing provider that blessing begins to turn from a blessing into a curse. Once we lose the giver of the healing that healing begins to turn from a healing into a sickness because we lose the focus of the healing of the healing provider into the healing and this morning the blind wants to teach us a lesson look beyond the look beyond the blessing unto Jesus Christ the giver of the blessing amen church number two make a choice to commit your life to the Holy Spirit make a choice to commit your life to the Holy Spirit it's not a feeling but a choice a choice is never um, determined on how you feel how circumstances are but it's something that you choose it's, it's, it's something that you get up and you say I'm going to do it no matter good times or bad times we have to every single person in this place we have to make a choice no matter how tired I am doesn't matter how sick I am doesn't matter if I have abundance or if I am in need, I'm going to commit my life to the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit has made a choice that He will never leave us or forsake us. Doesn't matter if we fall, doesn't matter if we're sick or blessed, Holy Spirit has made a choice for our lives that He'll never leave us or forsake us. And that's the same choice we need to make this morning. That if I'm doing good, I'm following God. If I am not doing so good, I'm still following God. Just recently, I, I, um, I was making a, a ch I actually made a choice for, it was a choice, uh, to start coming to morning prayer. Doesn't matter if I get two hours of sleep, one hour of sleep, or if I get eight hours of sleep. It was something that was hard for me to do because I was like, I, many times I came to morning prayer because if I felt that I was strong enough, I would come. And at times where I'm like, you know what? If I'm not having as much strength, I'm going to go in a little bit later. And as Vladimir was preaching the message on consistency and how God wants to bless us, I was like, you know what? doesn't matter how I feel. If it's maybe two hours, I'm making a choice to come every morning for morning prayer. It doesn't matter how tired I am. I'd rather sleep on this pew than be at home. But I'll make a choice to commit to developing that relationship with Jesus Christ. And to see my life, how just even in a matter of days, how God begins to bless, how God begins to strengthen, how God begins to give you wisdom and protection is just indescribable. And this is what happens when you commit your life to the Holy Spirit. When you make a choice, regardless of what happens on the outside, I'm going to stay committed to Jesus Christ. Amen, church? And we see... Uh, in, in the Bible, we see in Luke 17, verses 11 through 19, when Jesus Christ heals the 10 lepers, he, 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 he prays for them, they begin, they get healed, and he says, go, show yourself to the priest. And one person comes back, and Jesus Christ asks this question, I never really paid attention to, but he says, where are the other nine? Because the first one he came back and says, begins to worship God, begins to give him his praise, begins to follow Jesus. And Jesus is like, where is the other nine? What happened with them? Didn't I heal all of them? He's trying to prove a point that it's like, look, you, you, you receive your blessing, you walk away from me. But you don't understand, I'm the one that gives you that blessing. Where is the other nine? Jesus begins to emphasize that you cannot maintain that blessing without following me. You cannot keep and hold on to the blessing unless you develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit. Where you commit your life to him on a daily basis. Not just Wednesday, two hours. Not just Sunday, two hours. But every day I make a choice. I am committing my life to the Holy Spirit. Do all that we can to trust do all that we can just to, to rely on Jesus Christ, to trust in Him because He is the giver of all that we seek in for. Amen, church? 
work as if everything depends on us and pray as if everything depends on God. We do everything that we can on our part and the rest is left to God. The rest is left to God. God is the one that he said that I am faithful, I'll give you that blessing. But we ourselves have to put in that work, have to put in that commitment, have to put in that trying just, God, I'm making a choice that today I'll be the best. God, today I'll spend time with you. God, today I might be tired, but I'm still going to do it. It's a choice that I am making regardless of what is happening around me. If Satan loses no time, plotting against us how he can destroy us we should lose no time in committing our lives to Jesus Christ we should lose no time in committing and just giving our lives to Jesus Christ because Satan is every day that's his desire the Bible says he walks around like a roaring lion seeking who can destroy he doesn't have a well I'm not feeling today let me not destroy his life any second that you just give him he just, bah, just destroy your life any second that you open the door to Satan, he's like, oh, maybe I don't feel like destroying Pablo today. Maybe I don't feel like destroying Nasser today. Maybe I don't feel like giving him access. No, the moment you open the door, that's when the devil just steps in and destroys your life. So if Satan does not waste time in plotting on destroying your life, we should lose no time in committing our lives to Jesus Christ. Amen, church? How many are you saying that this morning I'll make a choice to commit my life to the Holy Spirit? Put your hands together for Jesus. Blind man, uh, the blind man teaches us a lesson this morning that he understood one thing that a lasting relationship with Jesus Christ is healing forever it is deliverance forever it is blessing forever it is having more than enough forever he's teaching us that lesson this morning he's telling that look you have to have a lasting relationship with Jesus Christ not an occasional visit to the church not just man I'm not I don't know I'm just just hard times hard times it's overrated in church today <laughs> it's committing your life to Jesus Christ that's a lesson that we can learn from blind by Timaeus a lasting relationship with Jesus Christ he says he followed Jesus along the road there is no turn back all the bridges burnt there's no more oh maybe if God meets my need then I'll do it there's no such thing as oh God if you bless me I'll do it no God you are my healer whether you heal me or not God you're my deliverer whether you deliver me or not God you are my savior whether you save me or not my long be my life belongs to you and there is no turning back in Jesus mighty name put your hands together for Jesus To embrace the source of the blessing is far more important than the blessing itself. To embrace the source of the blessing is far more important than the blessing itself because the blind man understood that once you lose the source, the blessing itself will dry out. Once you lose the source, the blessing itself will dry out. And we understand, I mean, dude, even look at your iPhone. Don't charge that thing for like two hours. That thing will dry you, will, will, will just, just dry you out like this. You won't know how to go about your life and everything else. It's, it's like that. Technology even proves itself to us and can teach us a lesson that look, you need to connect to the power. You need to stay connected regularly. I mean, take away cell phones from a young generation. We will go down the flames very fast. <laughs> Yet less we're talking about our relationship with God, our Christianity. Take away God from many of our lives and to some of us will be happy. Tell you the truth. Oh, Vladimir is not texting me for home group. Yeah, you know. It's like he's not bothering me to edit that video. Come on, life is good, you know. It's like it feels like if you take away God from some of our lives, life become better. Which shows that you're not building your life with Jesus Christ on the right things. The moment you begin to sense and you begin to know that there are people are pressuring me at church, that means that you are concentrating on the blessing. The moment you begin to understand, oh, I have so much to do. Oh, I'm just overloaded. Vladimir, don't give me another chassis because I can't handle it. I mean, I remember I, remember I, I, uh, I told that to Vlad one time. Terrible thing to say. I knew I'm like, if I'm going to tell Vladimir I'm too busy, he's going to like finish me on that one. He did. He said, your priorities are wrong. 
your priorities are wrong. So that even if I take off less things from you, you'll still find another thing to be busy at. He said, just develop that relationship with Jesus Christ. Make God your source and everything else will come in its way. Blind Bartimaeus teaches us a lesson. Follow Jesus along the road. Follow Jesus along the road. Amen, church? Amen. Number three, obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Make God's word the standard for your life. Once you follow Jesus Christ, begin to, begin to read God's word. Begin to meditate God's word. Don't just begin to like, oh, I read a chapter today. This is good. Begin to make it a part of you. Read God's word as if your life depends on knowing it. Begin to develop that relationship with God in the mornings. That's why we challenge every single person. We have morning prayers. It is open sometimes as early as 3 in the morning, 4 o'clock is the usual but as early as as four in the morning you can come you can pray you can just read the, your word you can meditate on God's word you can develop that relationship with Jesus Christ God does not want anyone to receive a blessing and lose it it's better that you never receive it than receive it and know to, and to be known that you had it and you lost it it's always, always, it's like, you know, if you know that you can't handle certain things, it's better that you never receive it. Then later on, people's like, oh, I remember you had that thing. Haha, <laughs> what happened to it? And you're like, to life, you know, life hit me like a truck. So it's, it's better that we do not receive the blessing than to receive and to lose it. It's better that. I mean, many people even like, you know, talk about, you know, they, they wish we were like, when I was staying in Nigeria, they wish they could live in America so they could have the things that, that we have, you know. But many times we have the things that we have and we mismanage it. We become even worse at it. So how do we maintain that blessing? How do we walk with Jesus Christ? Develop that relationship with Jesus. Make God's word the standard for your life. Amen, church? And number four and the, least, and the last point is give back to God. Give back to God. And the, the, how do we give back to God? Is love God with all your heart and love people. Witnessing, you know, serving, opening a home group has to be part of you. has to be something that you want to do because that's how you maintain your miracle. Giving back to God is rescuing people. Is inviting people to church. If somebody is having a bad day, we, we, we give them our love. We give them our encouragement. We help them out with money. We do anything that we can. That's how we give back to God because that's how we know we can maintain a blessing. We've seen many people who Jesus Christ has delivered, they began to serve God afterwards. They stayed alongside Jesus Christ, they began to serve Jesus because they know that in order for you to maintain the blessing, you have to give back to God. And to give him back to God is to do what matters to God the most is people. Begin to witness, begin to invite people, begin to open a home group. You say that I'm going to be a home group leader not because you know I want to put my picture on the board because you know everybody, all the cool people are on that board. No, because I want to maintain what God wants to give me. Maybe it's, it's for you to be a doctor, I don't know. Maybe for you it's to just to be a, a, a husband. But in order for you to maintain the blessing, whatever it is, you need to give back to God. Give back to God, giving in finances, opening home groups, inviting people regularly to church. That has to be your lifestyle because that is a lifestyle that maintains a blessing that God has. Amen, church. I want you to repeat after me. Say, I need God. I want you to say with faith, I need God more in blessing than in poverty. I need God more in freedom than in bondage. I need God more in supply than in want. And I want to challenge you this morning. I want to challenge you this morning. Stay true to Jesus Christ until the last moment till you live. Stay true to Jesus. Doesn't matter good or bad until we're glorified at last with him. We have to stay true to Jesus.